Good morning, everybody. This is Mathman, and we're on our third video for trigonometry. And we're going to be looking at more identities. We had derived the law of sines and the double angle formula for the sine function. And uh, we're going to take a look at more identities that can be derived. And so we shall get right to it. Now, on our whiteboard, one important identity that we should understand right away. Well, hoping this color will show up. When we, yeah, that's pretty dark. When we have when we have an angle. Alpha. I don't know why I always pick alpha. You know, this is X, and that's R, and that's Y. Well, if we draw the mirror image of that angle below the x-axis, this being the x-axis, and that's the y-axis. This angle, and I'm going to put this is x1 there and y1 for the height, this angle is negative alpha. And it just makes sense when you look at it. It's the same in angular distance, but it's in the negative direction. See, counterclockwise, we count the angle as positive, counterclockwise, we count it as negative angle. So, what do we have? The cosine of alpha is equal to x1 on r, which is equal because it's right at that point, the cosine of negative alpha. So we have an important relationship right there, that the cosine, cosine of any angle, A, is equal to the cosine of the negative of that same angle. And that's a, that's an important property that we need to remember. And likewise, when we deal with the sine, of the angle, we have sine of alpha is equal to y1 over r. But is that the same as the sine of negative alpha? Well, 
let's write the sine of negative alpha. And this is the question mark. Negative alpha equals negative y1 on r. So it's not true. Instead, we have sine of alpha is equal to the negative of sine of negative alpha. Or we could say that sine of negative alpha is equal to the negative of sine alpha. And that's a that is a very important relationship for us to remember. So we got those two done right away. So recapping, we just derived two very important identities. And we'll just write them out here as a summary. Cosine of a is equal to the cosine of negative a. There's no difference. However, the sine of a negative a is equal to the negative of sine a. And that those are those are important for us to remember, very important in deriving future identities. Okay, so now that we've got that done, let's take a look at more identities. Remember, we derived Remember, we derived this identity. We said the sine of A plus B is equal to sine A cos B plus sine b cos a. We had derived that identity. Well, what if we have sine a minus b? Well, from what we just learned, we have sine of a minus b. And that's equal to sine A cos negative B plus sine negative B cosine A. Now remember from our identities we just derived, this is the same as sine A cosine B plus, but that's not a plus because remember, the sine of negative B is this minus the sine of B cosine of A. And that's the 
uh, it's the end result. So the sine of A minus B. And now we have another identity. of the double angle formula. And now we're going to look at something even more special than that. We're going to say, in this case, let's say theta is equal to 90 plus A plus B. In fact, actually, we'll make that 90, 90 degrees minus A plus B. So, what do we have here? We have sine theta theta is equal to sine of 90 cosine of A plus B minus sine of A plus B times cosine of 90. But remember, the cosine of 90 is 0, remember? And we take our, this is 90 degrees, cosine, you see the, if the angle's almost 90, you see the cosine Cosine is like this. It gives us the x value. And as the value approaches 90 pi on 2, The distance, so let's say we have, uh, again, we're going to do this like this. We have x, but as the angle goes up towards pi on 2, x gets smaller. And when the angle is equal to pi on 2, the cosine of the angle is 0. So that was an important value for the cosine function. So this whole term goes out, and the sine of 90 is 1. So cosine... of A plus B is equal to sine theta. But remember now, we have is equal to sine of 90 minus A minus B. So, if we say that this is sine of 90 
minus a cosine minus b minus sine of b cosine of 90 minus a. But remember our identities. And remember, we whenever I write 90, we're really talking about 90 degrees. But what, what's 90 minus a, the sine of 90 minus a? Well, that's the cosine of a. So we have the cosine of a. And the cosine of minus b is simply the cosine of b. We have minus the sine of b. But remember, the cosine of 90 minus a is simply the sine of a. We have learned this in previous previous uh, in the previous video. Now, you see, we have the identity now, cosine of a plus b. That was pretty simple. And then we, it's just a, an application of the double angle formula in such a way that we can derive the double angle formula for the cosine function. So that's an important identity. And conversely, what if we have cosine a minus b? Well, what if we have this instead. Then we have cos uh, sine of theta equal to sine 90 cosine of minus a minus b. Let's make this a And that is equal to, let's see, minus sine of A minus B cosine of 90 degrees. But remember, that's 0. So that term goes out like the previous, and we're left with sine, and that's one. So sine of theta is equal to cosine of minus a minus b oops and that's basically the cosine of a minus b and we have so far Cosine of A minus B equal, now 
that's sine of 90 cosine of 90 minus a because we're going to look at it as 90 minus a plus b. Okay, so that's 90 minus a and cosine of b. And we have plus sine of b cosine of 90 minus a. Well, that then is cosine of a minus b is equal to, that's cosine of a cosine of b plus sine b cosine or sine of a. I didn't write that very well, did I? Sine b sine a. So we have another identity. So now we have four identities that we derive for the double angle formula, all because we understood that one property. So let's summarize them, write them down. These are all part of the double angle formula. Okay, so we have the sine of A plus B is equal sine A cosine B plus sine B cosine A sine A minus B is equal sine a cosine b minus sine a cosine oops sorry <laughs> wrong argument b cosine a then if we have cosine of a plus b that's equal to cos sine a cos sine b minus sine a sine b and lastly we have cosine of a minus b is equal to cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So we have these four variations of the double angle formula. One, two, three, four.
Now, these are things that you don't have to write down. You can derive them and just from the fundamental um, basic uh, relationships that we know exist for the sine function and the cosine function. So some teachers may want you to memorize these things, but you can memorize, uh, you can derive them yourself pretty readily if you just remember some basic principles of the sine and cosine function. <clears throat> and we start with the cosine of A, but we remember that A is equal to a on 2 plus a on 2. So this is equal to the cosine of a on 2 times the cosine of a on 2 minus the sine of a on 2 sine of a on 2. But this is simply the square of the cosine of a on 2 minus the square of the sine of a on 2. And remember, one of our very first identities was the cosine squared of an angle plus the sine squared of the angle is equal to 1. It's the form of a circle. We derived it in our earlier videos. So here we put everything in terms of cosine. We have cosine squared a on 2 minus 1 minus sine squared of, I mean, whoops, <laughs> just copying what I'm seeing, that becomes the cosine squared of a on 2. Let's make this a better bracket so that we one minus that way we don't mix up our brackets. And so when we carry out the algebra, we have cosine cosine squared of a on 2 minus 1 plus cosine squared of a on 2, but that's equal to 2 cosine squared of a on 2 minus 1. And we carry the 1 over, divide by 2, we have cosine of a plus 1 on 2 equals cosine squared of a on 2. Flipping them around, we've got, and taking the square root, we have cosine of a on 2 is equal to the square root of cosine 1 plus cosine a on 2, all under the square root sign. And that's our 
That's a half angle formula. We can do something similar for the sine function. Instead of instead of using the cosine, we could have used the sine. So we have cosine a is equal to cosine. We'll just shortcut it because we already derived it. A on 2 minus sine squared of A on 2. But if this is equal to 1 minus sine squared of A on 2, minus sine squared a on 2, we have 1 minus 2 sine squared of a on 2. We have cosine of a minus 1 equals minus 2 sine squared of a on 2. That becomes then multiplying by mul minus 1 across we have 1 minus cosine of a is equal to 2 sine squared a on 2 bringing things to the other side. We have 2 sine squared a on 2 equals 1 minus cosine a. And then that is divided by 2 sine squared a on 2 equals 1 minus cosine a all over 2. And then you take the square root and we have the sine of a on 2 is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine a on 2. And that's another version of the half angle formula so now we've we've derived what is it six identities now seven identities seven identities now here's a variant of something that we already seen Instead of a being a on 2 plus a on 2, let's look at 2a equals a plus a. So we have the sine of 2a, and that's equal to sine a cos a plus sine a cos a and that's equal to 2 sine a cos a and that's another version of the double angle formula this is something that you'll use 
many times in trigonometry. So we're really flying through identities at this point. And I don't know what else I have here that I can show you at this point. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other other forms that we can do. And let's take a look at our basic cosine squared A plus sine squared A is equal to 1. Well, what if we divide it through by cosine squared? So we have 1 plus sine squared A divided by cosine squared A is equal 1 over cosine squared A. Well, that gives us 1 plus the tangent squared of A is equal to the secant squared of A. And this will be helpful, especially when we get into calculus, where we use trigonometric substitutions uh, for the argument of the integrand, or the integrand of the, uh, of the uh, integral. And these will be uh, important to recognize and use as methods or tricks to be able to complete an integration. But we haven't talked about calculus yet or integration. This is all strictly trigonometry at this point. Oh, consequently, on that, we could also say the tangent squared of the angle is equal to the secant squared of the angle minus 1. So conversely, we can say that, or we can say the tangent of A is equal to the square root of the secant squared A minus 1. And likewise, tangent secant of A could be equal to the square root of 1 plus the tangent squared of A. So there are variants on the theme. These are all trigonometric formulas and identities. Now, what if we divided through by sine squared? So we got cosine squared A plus the sine squared A equals 1. If we divide through by the sine squared, we got cosine squared A on sine squared a plus 1 is equal to, this is the cos 1 on the sine squared a. But this is the cotangent, oops, didn't write, co cotangent squared of a plus 1 equals the cosecant squared of a. And just like the previous formula, we have the cotangent of a is equal to the square root of cosecant 
squared a minus 1 or cosecant a is equal to the 1 plus the cotangent squared a. So you can see how in trigonometry we can do so many neat things. So we went through, we really flew through quite a number of identities at this point. And I think for the time being, we'll just leave it at this. We don't want to make the video too long. But as you can see, from the very basic principles of trigonometry, just understanding the very basic basic uh, properties or characteristics of the sine and cosine function, you can derive um, a whole slew of identities. Now, we haven't done any anything yet with these identities. Again, I kind of alluded to the fact that some of these identities will be used later in calculus to help us integrate. Um, we won't be running into too many of these identities in a practical sense when you start looking at trigonometric problems. You're not looking so much at using these identities as much as you are um, applying the fundamental uh, trigonometric functions like the, the sine function and the cosine function and, and how they relate to um, deriving uh, distances and areas and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool stuff. But right now, at this point, we're still just uh, covering the the various identities that can be derived. And I think that's beautiful in itself because um, so many neat things can be uh, derived out of the uh, trigonometric functions. And uh, so many things fall out. It, it's just so cool how that, that works. And... Uh, Again, trigonometry is a very powerful form of mathematics, and it's uh, broadly applied in both science and engineering and in uh, applications like surveying. Uh, surveying in particular, it's pretty, pretty uh, uh, important. In fact, uh, yesterday I I applied it to a particular problem. It wasn't a very um, it wasn't a very difficult problem, but uh, we were looking at a topo map, and we were looking at distances, and we had a body of water, and then we had a little embankment, small embankment, and then a nearly vertical slope that peaked out just about like that. Now, we found a topo map that gave the elevation there to there, so the distance... was vertically in this direction, it was 60 feet. Whoops, <laughs> I'm so used to writing degrees. This hash mark here, whoops, that's pretty smudged. 
let's take that pretty smudged 60 that represents a foot and we found that this was 64 feet in this direction and that was all we knew we wanted to know how steep the slope was well simple application here um, this angle so we knew that 64 on 60 was was the tangent of that angle so we have uh, the ratio of 64 on 60 was equal to the tangent of the angle. We haven't covered this yet, but there's always uh, an inverse function, and we haven't we haven't really looked at that yet. But you can look on your calculator, and you have an inverse function, and that's what I have on my calculator here. Yeah, I was looking at YouTube videos of um, Carol Shelby. <laughs> he died last summer at the age of 93. So what we write is the tangle, the tangent, the inverse tangent. That's how we write inverse tangent of the ratio 64 on 60 is equal to alpha. And then when you do that, divided by 60 and Looking at the inverse tangent, we get alpha. Alpha was 46.8 degrees. That's not alpha. This is, we're going to call it phi. So phi plus alpha equals 90. So phi is equal to 90 minus alpha. And we ended up with 43 degrees. That's how steep this slope was, 43 degrees. That's a pretty, pretty steep slope. Okay, so for the time being, I think we've covered enough. Um, we're going to <clears throat> call it quits at this point. And I wish you all well, and we'll be picking up more on trigonometry in the next video. Uh, there are so many different things that we can look at. For example, the inverse functions, which um, I just showed you have a, a utility. And we'll go over what the inverse functions are, and we'll talk about all these different things in future videos. So... Anyway, I hope you found this instructive, and until next time, I wish you all well.